Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the antiplatelets. Whenever there is a damage to the blood vessel, immediately clotting process is going to be stimulated. So coagulation cascade is stimulated on one side and platelets are activated to produce a platelet aggregation. So both this coagulation cascade and platelet activation and aggregation produce a clot which can produce a hemostasis. But in the activation and aggregation of platelets, what are the important steps? So whenever there is a damage to the blood vessel, immediately acidic phospholipids are going to be expressed at the site of injury. And one more uh, factor, von Weilbrand factor is going to be released, which is responsible for the attachment of the platelets at the site of injury. So these factors are going to increase the attachment of the platelets. Now once these platelets are going to be attached, they are undergo the activation such that they are going to release the few of the mediators. So which type of mediators they can release? They can release the mediators which can further produce the activation and aggregation. For example, ADP, adenosine diphosphate as well as 5-HT are going to be released. And few of the mediators like the thrombox and A2 is going to be more synthesized within the platelets. In this way, these mediators are going to be released from the platelets which are going to acting on the corresponding receptors on the other platelets to produce a platelet aggregation. So these are the three important steps in the platelet activation and aggregation. First one is the attachment, second one is the release of the mediators and third one is the platelet aggregation. So now let us see this process in detail and let us see what are the drug targets. Now when there is a damage to the blood vessel, the endothelial layer is going to be ruptured and collagen fibers are going to be exposed. At this situation, one of the factor, one wild brand factor is going to be released, which is responsible for the binding of the platelets to the endothelium. Now the platelets which are in the resting position, they can come to the site of injury and once they are going to pass through the site, they can be attached to the site of injury through the von Weilbrand factor as well as they can also bind with the collagen through the GP4 receptors. In this way, the first step in the platelet activation is the attachment of the platelet to the site of injury. Then these platelets are undergoing a morphological change, thereby they can change their shape into a pseudopodal shape. Now after the shape change, platelets can express a more number of mediators like the ADP and 5-HT and they can also synthesize few of the mediators from the arachidonic acid. One of the important mediators is the thrombox NA2. In this way, these chemical mediators are going to be more expressed within the platelets and platelets are also expressed with few of the receptors like the P2Y receptors which are the receptors for the adenosine diphosphate. Similarly, they are also expressed with the thrombox NA2 receptors. Now after the activation, platelets can release few of the mediators. One of the important mediators is the ADP, adenosine diphosphate, which can act on the P2Y receptors. Thereby it can increase the intracellular calcium levels. When the calcium is increased within the platelets, it can increase the expression of the GP2B by 3A receptors. These GP2B by 3A receptors are responsible for the platelet aggregation. Now any other platelet which is again expressed with the GP2B by 3A receptor is going to be connected through the fibrinogen. In this way, GP2B by 3A receptors play an important role in the platelet aggregation. Similarly, what are the thrombox in A2 that is going to be synthesized can act on the thrombox in A2 receptors which further increase the platelet aggregation. In this way, platelets are going to be aggregated and they are going to form a clot along with the fibrin mesh, thereby they prevent the loss of bleeding. So what are the drug targets which are acting like antiplatelets? So here you can easily say that the platelets are aggregated by important mediators like the thrombox in A2, ADP as well as uh, GP2B by 3A receptors. So now the drugs can act on these targets, thereby they can produce the antiplatelet action. So what are the drug targets? The first one is the thrombox and A2 synthesis inhibitor because thrombox and A2 is responsible for the platelet aggregation. And second one is the ADP receptor antagonist. Adenosine diphosphate is going to bind to the P2Y receptors which is going to increase the platelet aggregation. Similarly, third one is the GP2B by 3A receptors. Fourth one is the phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors are going to produce a vasodilatation which can suppress the platelet aggregation. And fifth one is the prostacycline analogs. Prostacycline like the prostaglandin I2 can also produce the vasodilatation, thereby it can inhibit the platelet aggregation. So these are the various drug targets used as antiplatelets. Now let us go one by one and let us discuss what are the drugs included in these categories. First one is the thrombox in A2 synthesis inhibitors. 
one of the well known drug is the aspirin aspirin is having the structure like this and this is a salicylic acid with an acetyl substitution so aspirin is the acetyl salicylic acid the main target of the aspirin is the cox enzyme cyclooxygenase enzyme this cyclooxygenase enzyme converts the arachidonic acid into the thromboxane a2 as well as it also converts into the other prostaglandins but here thromboxane a2 is more important because it is going to produce a platelet aggregation now aspirin can inhibit the activity of the cox enzyme by binding to this enzyme in a irreversible way how it is going to produce a irreversible inhibition of the cox enzyme this acetyl salicylic acid is having one of the leaving group acetyl group that's why this aspirin is converted to salicylic acid where this acetyl group is going to be transferred to the cox enzyme such that it produces the acetylated cox enzyme this acetylated cox enzyme is having the loss of activity thereby it can inhibit the synthesis of the thromboxane a2 in this way aspirin can inhibit the thromboxane a2 synthesis thereby it can prevent the platelet aggregation so aspirin is given at a dose of 50 to 325 mg you can easily see that when aspirin is used as an antiplatelet it is given at a low dose from 50 to 325 mg but as an analgesic it can be given greater than 325 mg and what are the side effects because aspirin acts as an antiplatelet the main side effect is the hemorrhage so it can increase the bleeding time in the patients so bleeding time should be checked when the aspirin is given for a prolonged period and this drug can also increase the gastric irritation as well as it's also increasing the hemorrhage so aspirin is having a risk for increase in the gastric bleeding so this should be again thoroughly checked in the patients and aspirin can be combined with other drugs we have one of the combination aspirin plus clopidogrel where clopidogrel is a adp receptor antagonist similarly second drug targets is the adp receptor antagonists we have four types of drugs like clopidogrel ticlopidine prasugrel and ticagrelar how these drugs are acting these drugs are mainly acting on the adp receptors which are expressed on the platelets so now the platelets are expressed with the p2y receptors which are the receptors for the adp now when this adp is going to bind to this p2y receptors it increase the intracellular calcium levels when this calcium is going to be increased they promote the expression of the gp2b by 3 receptors which are responsible for the platelet aggregation now this adp receptor antagonists are blocking the p2y receptors thereby they prevent the platelet aggregation so here the three drugs clopidogrel ticlopidine prasugrel all these are belonging to the same chemical category they are having a structure like this this ring system is nothing but the thionopyridine a pyridine ring system is attached with the thiophene so this is called as thionopyridines and these drugs are irreversible receptor antagonists so they produce a long duration of action whereas another drug ticagrelar is a reversible adenosine receptor antagonist so the first three drugs produce uh, irreversible inhibition which may increase the risk of hemorrhage but ticagrelar is having the less risk of hemorrhage because it's a reversible antagonist so what are the side effects ticlopidine is one of the drug which is uh, having two important side effects it produces a neutropenia as well as thrombocytopenia so neutrophil count as well as platelet count is going to be decreased by ticlopidine that's why it is nowadays less preferred and other drugs are the clopidogrel clopidogrel is one of the widely used adp receptor antagonist which is uh, producing few other side effects like the dyspepsia and rashes skin rashes can be produced and even it can also produce a gastrointestinal side effects like the diarrhea similarly other drugs like the prasugrel is a neuroagent which is going to produce few other side effects like hypersensitive reactions as well as it can also produce angioedema and finally ticagrelar which is a reversible adp receptor antagonist this drug can produce a dyspnea as one of the important side effect third category of drugs are the gp2b by 3 receptor antagonists we have few other drugs like abciximab here the suffix mab indicates is a monoclonal antibody similarly another drug is the tyrofiban and third one is a eptifibatid this last drug eptifibatid is not a peptide drug and all these drugs are going to acting on the gp 2b by 3a receptors where they are going to antagonize these receptors are responsible for the platelet aggregation through the fibrin network and when these receptors are antagonized they can prevent the platelet aggregation and again these drugs are going to inhibit the platelet aggregation therefore they produce hemorrhage as one of the important side effect fourth one is the phosphodiesterase inhibitors one of the important drug is the dipyridamol this drug is having the multiple mechanism of actions 
This drug can inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme, which is responsible for the conversion of the cyclic AMP into the AMP. So metabolism of the cyclic AMP is going to be mediated by dipyridamol. When this enzyme is going to be inhibited, cyclic AMP levels are going to be increased, which results in the vasodilatation. Similarly, dipyridamol can also inhibit the uptake of the adenosine as well as it can also inhibit the thromboxin A2 synthesis. So by all of these actions, dipyridamol can produce the antiplatelet activity. And since it acts as a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, it increases the cyclic AMP levels within the vascular smooth muscle, thereby produce the vasodilatation. So dipyridamol is a vasodilator. And because of this vasodilatory effects, it produces few other side effects like headache as well as dizziness. And this drug can also produce few of the gastrointestinal side effects like dyspepsia and diarrhea. Similarly, another one is the silostrazol. Silostrazol is one of the drugs which is going to inhibit the phosphodiesterase type 3 enzyme, which is responsible for the metabolism of the cyclic AMP into the AMP. So by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase type 3 enzyme, silostrazol can increase the cyclic AMP levels in the two target organs. The raised levels of cyclic AMP can inhibit the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle as well as they can also inhibit the platelet activity. So cyclic AMP acts as a vasodilator as well as platelet aggregation inhibitor. And again, this drug acts as a vasodilator, so it produces few of the side effects like headache as well as diarrhea and dyspepsia as few of the side effects. Fifth one is the prostacycline analogs. One of the drugs is the epoprostinol. Epoprostinol is a prostaglandin I2 analog, which is also known as prostacycline. This PGI2 can act on the IP receptors, which are the receptors for the prostaglandin I2. Thereby, it can increase the vasodilatation. When it is acting on the IP receptors, it can increase the cyclic AMP levels, which produce the vasodilatation. And as the blood vessels are dilated, the platelets are not attached to the site of injury. So vasodilatation can inhibit the platelet activation as well as aggregation. But this epoprostinol is having an half-life of around 3 minutes. So, so that's why this drug is given as an IV infusion. What are the clinical uses? Antiplatelets can be used in the various conditions where there is an abnormal formation of clot and activation of the platelets. For example, they can be used in the myocardial infarction, in the acute myocardial infarction, as well as to prevent the frequent attacks of myocardial infarction. These antiplatelets can be given. In the atrial fibrillation, again, these drugs can be given to prevent the further thrombotic events. And in the ischemic attack, where there is a lack of oxygen, again, there is a chance of... Uh, clot formation. In such cases, again, antiplatelets are given. Coronary artery bypass grafting. After these surgical procedures, again, there may be an increased risk of platelet aggregation and activation. So in such case, we can use antiplatelets. Few of the antiplatelets can also be used in the pulmonary hypertension. So one of the example is the epoprostinol. Epoprostinol is a prostacycline analog, which increase the vasodilatation, thereby it reduces the blood pressure. So these are the various clinical use of antiplatelet agents. Platelets are activated and aggregated by a damage to the blood vessel. But sometimes without any damage, platelets can be inappropriately activated. For example, in the atherosclerosis, the rupture of atheromatous plaque may result in the activation of the platelets. When there is a rupture of this endothelium or atheromatous plaque, they will express the acidic phospholipids as well as the von Willebrand factor is going to be released which is responsible for the attachment of the platelets. Once the platelets are going to be attached, they undergo shape change and release few of the mediators like the ADP, 5-HT, as well as synthesize the mediators like the thromboxin A2, which are acting on their corresponding receptors. This ADP, when acting on the P2Y receptors, it can increase the intracellular calcium levels, which increase the expression of the GP2B by 3 receptors, which results in the platelet aggregation. So here the main drug targets are the thromboxin A2 synthesis inhibitors like the aspirin, ADP receptor antagonists like the clopidogrel, ticlopidine, prosugrel, ticagrelar, and GP2B by 3 receptor antagonists like the apsiximab, tyrofiban, eptifipadid. Similarly, if you have the vasodilators like the phosphodiesterase inhibitors like dipyridamol and silostrazol, and prostacycline analogs like the epoprostinol, all these are the drugs which can be used as antiplatelets and all these antiplatelets produce main side effect as hemorrhage because they are going to inhibit the platelet activation as well as aggregation so that's about this antiplatelets hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video